there, Improv Tipsters. Welcome back to Improv Tips, where I and some of the best improvisers in the world give you improv tips and advice to make you a better, more confident, and happier improviser wherever you are in your improv journey. If you haven't been here before, I'm your host, Paul Valancourt, and today I want to talk about starting a scene. Aristotle said, well begun is half done right? And if we start off a scene, if we have a good strong start to a scene, it's easier to have a good scene. Can we have a tough start and still have a good scene? Yes. Can we have a good start and still have a hard scene? Yes, of course. But generally, if the start of the scene is good, then the scene has a better chance of being a good, strong scene. So why not give yourself every advantage and every chance to have a good scene? I saw, I talked about starting a scene, ding, ding, in this video, but I wanted to revisit it today and give you three concrete strategies and tools that you can use to improve the start of your scenes. If you enjoyed the video and find it useful, consider liking it and subscribing to this channel for more improv tips to come. All right? Today, uh, I wanna talk about these three tips. The first one is, before you even get on stage, before you even get on stage, you're on the wings and you're just about to go into a scene. And I think for me, what I'm thinking about is, is what am I bringing in? What am I starting with, right? A lot of times when we're doing long form, which is what I do a lot of nowadays, um, we are taking some sort of uh, suggestion from the audience and doing a an opening to generate more information. So what am I bringing in? Well, if the suggestion was cigarette, I don't want to do a scene about cigarettes, and I probably won't even say cigarette. But what does that mean? Maybe it's sort of a... Uh, uh, it, it, it implies to me a certain character trait or a certain mood or a certain sort of vibe. And I maybe I'll take that into the scene. And it won't be about cigarettes and maybe someone will have a cigarette and maybe they won't. But that vibe that cigarettes gave me will inform the scene. So I'm bringing that in, right? Um, I'll say right now that generally in long form, if the suggestion is cigarette or whatever, we generally don't say that in the scene. We don't do scenes about that thing directly. We sort of drop that idea into the pool of our subconscious and let those ripples come out. And then we use those ripples as inspiration for our scenes, not the stone, the ripples, right? Because now everything is, is based on something. It's coming from somewhere, the ripples off that initial suggestion from the audience, but it's not right on the nose. And this is really important because it really opens up the piece. And also I'm really of the belief that if a suggestion is cigarette and then someone comes into a scene and says, hey, I just wanna smoke this cigarette. It just sounds so loud because it's like, oh my gosh, yeah, we get it. That's the suggestion. So. Dialing it all back. I take that suggestion or some of the information that we have generated and I use those ripples to inspire my character. So I'm coming in with something. So I'm inspired by something. So my scene is based on something rather than nothing. Can we come into the scene totally blank? Yes. Is it our best choice? I don't think so. I think the best improvisers that I know come in with a little bit of something to start them off. They may give it up right away if their partner says something different, but they come in with something. That's my first tip, is using the suggestion. My second tip is when I come into a scene, 99 times out of 100, I will engage the where right away. I'll make a decision about where we are and I'll start doing some activity to ground me in the where. I'm a big believer about using the space and using the where. A lot of times I see, especially beginning students, not doing that. And then their scenes are just kind of like just two people standing stock still talking to or at each other, and they don't seem to be anywhere. They don't seem to really be alive because they're not anywhere. They're just standing still, right? We're not creatures that generally stand still. We're doing this, we're doing that. We're having interactions with the people while we're doing other stuff, right? And that means using the wear, staying engaged in the wear. For me, that's one of my, uh, my favorite ways to start is to come in, engage the wear, and then it grounds me right away, right? And then I can, uh, then whatever my partner comes in with, we can sort of, uh, vary up the tempo of the scene. We don't have to fill the whole scene with talking because now we also have something to do. So we can go fast, we can go slow, but it's our choice now because we have that where. And also we are somewhere. So I have different ways of not only saying and responding with words to what my partner says, but also using the where to show how I feel, to show what I, um, what my emotions are about about what they're saying. So I can play subtext. There's so many great um, virtues 
to using the wear, not the least of which is it grounds you. Also, using the wear, I really believe, as I've said a thousand times, it takes your scenes from two-dimensional to three-dimensional, right? It takes them from just people talking where you could turn off the lights and you really wouldn't miss anything to, oh my gosh, no, I gotta see what's going on because that's part of the scene, right? So that's just as important of a way to communicate information between the two partners and between you and the audience, right? And that starts with, engaging the wear right out of the gate. So number one, using the suggestion so your scene is based on something rather than nothing. Two, engaging the wear as soon as possible. And three is I come in and I'm engaging the wear, my partner comes in and if uh, maybe they're saying something first or maybe I'm saying something first, if I say something first, I'm gonna say, and even if they say something first, really, let's be honest, I'm gonna say something about them. I'm gonna say something about my partner. I'm gonna try to not talk about what I'm doing talk about what my space work is. Hey, I'm making coffee. Yes, yes, we see that you're making coffee. We don't need to talk about it, right? I'm gonna try to say something about my partner because then in the same way that starting engaging the wear grounds me in the reality of the wear, saying something about my partner grounds me in the reality of our relationship right away, right? If I say that big playable gift about my partner or respond to their big playable gift about me in character back to them, it grounds us in that relationship because every scene is really, it's not about the suggestion, it's not about the where, it's really about the relationship of those two people. So that's probably the most important thing that I do. It's great that I can use a suggestion and it gives me so something to work with. It's great that I ground the scene in the where because that, that makes the scene two dimensional, three dimensional, but without that relationship, it's zero dimensional, right? So I try to say that thing about my partner, that thing about my partner, that big playable gift about my partner as soon as I can right? Because that creates or generates or grounds me in my relationship with my partner. And that's really what it's all about. So to sum up our three tips, one, using the suggestion so that I'm coming in with my scene based on something rather than nothing Two, engaging the wear right away, some sort of activity or some sort of um, sense of, uh, of the action or the, or the, the surroundings. And three, keying into my partner, saying that big playable gift about them to start that relationship going, right? I think if you do those three things, your scene will start off like gangbusters and will have a much greater chance of succeeding because you've really done all of your homework right up, boom, right out of the gate in the first couple, two, three lines maybe half a dozen lines. So what do you do to start off a scene strong? What is your big go-to idea that helps you start off a scene strong and really get off to a good, a, a good beginning? Like Aristotle said, well begun is half done. Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next week.